Okay, what I'd like to do today is uh, show you guys a program that's called Stellarium. This is a virtual planetarium, virtual celestial sphere program, actually more like Sky Dome program, that is a free download. Um, if you go to Google, type in Stellarium, um, you can go see their site, or you can actually go directly to the download, which you can see I did. And then once you install the program, um, just go ahead and run it. Um, defaults showing to the southern sky. Um, you can see there's also a view of the western sky. There's Venus. The northern sky. This is supposed to be a field in Germany somewhere. Um, you can adjust this to be other locations too, at least a few other locations. And as they throw more up there, um, you can pick more locations. I will tell you, um, with me being here in Washington, D.C., 38 degrees, which you can actually just type in the information, um, but I'm right outside Washington, D.C. And if you are right outside Washington, D.C., um, we don't have fields like this. Um, that tree that's probably 100 yards away would probably be more like 15 feet. be right here, this thick, and would cover up a lot of the sky. In fact, you'd actually lose a whole lot of this. If we do look that back down towards uh, the southwestern sky, we scroll up, and there's the sun. Um, a neat thing you can do with this program also, well actually let me show you, you can do time. You can uh, turn on twinkling of stars and some other things. Uh, I don't want to go a lot into this, because this is more like what it does for us. You can actually find an object in the sky, like if you wanted to find Venus, you just type it in there. Or if you wanted to find the Horsehead Nebula, um, you can do the same thing. Um, you can go into configuration, um, where you can see you can pick different languages, uh, some other things. And then you can also do help window, um, where you can actually learn a little bit about uh, some keystrokes if you like the keyboard rather than the mouse. Um, what you can also do is hit this one down here, and I'm going to throw this one in there first. Um, this is actually um, what's called uh, right ascension and declination. Um, right ascension and declination actually talks about the celestial sphere, um, where the celestial equator um, is located right here. And during the summer, we get to see a lot more of the southern sky, move the sun higher in the sky moves everything that's below it higher into the sky. But that's the celestial equator. If you were standing on the equator, this would be running right above your head. And then you can see it goes 5 degrees, 10 degrees up above that. Um, you can actually see that the sun, sun is sitting um, 23 and a half degrees above the equator, but it's actually a lot higher in our sky. If I throw, turn this one off and turn this one on, um, this is actually the way it is based on the Earth, and you can see the horizon where the sun and the Earth, excuse me, where the Earth and the sky touch, that's zero degrees, and this is five degrees above that, and ten degrees, and fifteen, and twenty, and if you look at the same sun, that sun is up there at sixty-three degrees here on July, uh, July 7th. Um, so you can actually see quite a bit of the, um, this. this is actually about 3 o'clock in the afternoon. So it's actually moved from what's called your meridian. Meridian is the point goes from directly south, directly above your head, to that location, which is your zenith, and then actually moves along that 360 line all the way to the north compass point. But that's your meridian. If things are before your meridian, um, like the sun was at, let me actually pick the time again. Now you can see the sun's moved over here. There's your meridian at 180 degrees, directly south. If the sun is before your meridian, this is called anti-meridian, or AM. If the sun crosses your meridian, which it's going to do between 1 o'clock today and 2 o'clock today, it's 1 o'clock, um, almost 2 o'clock. Um, it actually crosses your meridian. Now it's after the meridian, which is called post-meridian, or PM. So this is your PM part of the sky. This is your AM part of the sky, all in reference to that sun. So if I actually move the minutes now, looks like today at 1.14ish. Um, and actually what you can do that gets really hard to see 
you can go down here and you can turn off the atmosphere. Um, our sun refracts in the atmospheric gases, nitrogen, oxygen is in our atmosphere, giving it that beautiful blue color. Let's get rid of the atmosphere, which of course you wouldn't want to happen in real life, but get rid of the atmosphere and then you can actually see when it really does cross. And right about there. So today at uh, 1.14.20 seconds, it crossed the meridian and became post-meridian time. So if I get rid of this, you can see there are other things in the sky. Um, here is Orion with Betelgeuse, um, Rigel, the belt. Um, it actually has this nice pretty side to it. And you can see this time of day it's over there um, between south and west, a little bit closer to south. But it's, it's there, it's in our daytime sky. This is a winter constellation. There, Sirius um, with uh, Ursa Major, um, horn uh, ears sticking up here. There's the front leg, back leg, and tail. Um, we have uh, Procyon, the little dog up there. We have actually the Sun in, looks like, Gemini. Um, we have Venus and Jupiter over here with Rigel. Um, and I know this is Taurus the bull, um, Rigel. Um, um, so we have Venus and Jupiter inside of Taurus. I'm sure that means to somebody who's into astrology. I'm trying to teach astronomy. Um, another thing you can do here is you can actually turn on the names of these constellations. So you can see there is Orion, um, there is Taurus, um, Monosaurus, um, there is the little dog Canis Minor and the big dog Canis Major, Lepus the bunny is down there. Um, you can actually draw a couple of stick figure things um, so you can maybe now see Orion with a bow um, sort of raising it up to fight Taurus or it can be a shield to keep Taurus away. Um, has an arm with um, a lot of times a sword up here there is Gemini the Twins, um, there is Canis Minor, Monosaurus, Canis Major, uh, Lepus the Bunny. Um, there are 88 known constellations. We only get to see about 60 of them here in the Northern Hemisphere where I'm located. Uh, if you're actually located up by Santa, up by the North Pole, you'll, that number's cut down to probably close to 44. Uh, if you live on the equator, you get to see all 88 of them. Um, but we can actually watch these with time. Let me speed time along a little bit because what I want to show you is we have um, four compass directions. If you look to the east, this is the area where things rise. And you saw Saturn with uh, Virgo coming up, um, Corona Borealis, the northern crown. Here comes Serpens, uh, Serpens the serpent, um, Hercules. Um, but you can see no, going from almost north, things want to rise over here on this eastern part of the sky all the way over to almost south and you can see even right here things want to come up and then they arc across that meridian that line from south to zenith to north um, they arc across that meridian there goes Sagittarius, there goes Scorpius, my sign of the zodiac um, but you can actually see what they do over here on the west as they set and even right here really close to um, the southern point, they, they just rise and arc a little bit before they set. Sun just came up. And there it is. Um, but if we look towards the west, things are, this is the setting side, even all the way over to the north compass point. These things are trying to get down to the horizon. If you get closer and closer to the north and we could cut that tree down, you'd see that some of these stars don't set. They get really close to the horizon, but they don't go underneath. These guys are called circumpolar constellations. Let me turn this one on. Let me turn this one up again. Um, this is the true celestial uh, orientation where we actually talk about right ascension and declination. Right ascension is in hours, and you can see there goes hour 11. Here comes hour 12, hour 13. There are 24 hours if you go all the way around. Um, I can't see all 24 of them. Uh, there's 23. This one's probably... Yeah, 24 or 0. And then you also have declination, um, which are these lines, and their numbers are in degrees, and you can see there's the 40, 50, 60, 50, sorry, 40, 50, 45, 50, 55, 60, all the way to 90, and sitting right there, almost directly at 90 degrees, the North Celestial Pole, is Polaris. Um, Polaris is the tail star of Ursa Minor, the little bear. 
And if you really want, you can get rid of the names and you can actually throw on, actually we can throw the names in there too, throw on Pictorial. This is uh, Draco, or Draco the dragon. There's the little bear. And if you look up here, there's the big bear, Ursa Minor, uh, Major, sorry. Um, but we have uh, a big giraffe up here. We have an Ethiopian queen and king. Um, we have lots of things, and if you look at my January uh, constellation uh, video, you can see all those. Another thing you can do with this is you can turn off, because the earth gets in the way sometimes, you can actually turn off the earth. And then you actually get to see the South Celestial Pole. Maybe. There's the South Celestial Pole. Notice that the South Celestial Pole doesn't have a nice little star. What they have to use is the Southern Cross, which is right here. Um, which points in this direction, and then they use some other constellation to actually point to that location, and where those two lines intersect in the sky, that's their south celestial pole. I tend to like ours a lot better. If you lived right on the equator, um, your sky would look something like this, and you notice that the constellations don't really rise or set. Um, they actually sit um, right along the horizon. Um, so you can actually do lots of things, and I'm going to throw on the earth again. There's the earth. So there's our sky. And you notice they move in a nice, beautiful east to west. Um, for us, it looks like a nice, beautiful clockwise direction. Sun moves in a clockwise direction, our clock. If you look this direction, um, where the southern hemisphere would look, um, things are moving counterclockwise. Even though they're still rising from the east and setting to the west, the east is on the opposite side of the map because they're looking towards the north when we, for our sun, there's the sun right there, um, look towards the south. So we get to see it move that way. Okay, there's a quick view of Stellarium and the things you can do. There are lots of other things you can do with it. Um, this is just an orientation for a celestial sphere. Uh, thanks for stopping by. Looks like I'm going to have to minimize this a little bit um, so I can go into here and actually say stop. Thank you.